Hello, I just finished watching Godzilla x Kong The New Empire, and in this movie, it, it takes place after Godzilla vs. Kong, and in this movie, the little girl from the last movie is having visions of something that could be going on in Hollow Earth, and a subdivision of Monolith has to go down to Hollow Earth and figure out what's going on while Kong is figuring out the same thing and Godzilla is just there to look cool. Godzilla doesn't really have a purpose here except for the ending to look cool and to help out with the battle. Originally this movie was going to be a, a Son of Kong movie but later, but later on it became another uh, a crossover with Godzilla and King Kong. I think this movie works really well and what it wants to do with the the monsters getting more silly and ridiculous more Saturday morning cartoon stuff. The human stuff, the hu the human elements in this movie are still weak. They have personality, yes, but they don't really have an arc. I like Dan Stevens' character, and I like Brian Tyree Henry's character because he reminds me of myself. I think the I think the little arc between Rebe Rebecca Hall's character and the little girl works well. It was it was slightly emotional at the ending. I found this movie to be more small scale compared to the last ones. And it's funny to say that small scale because you're looking at titans that are bigger than buildings themselves and dumb CG big CGI blockbuster fights. When I mean small scales, it's usually in the sense of like the other ones felt like they had bigger villains and a bigger build up. This movie just kind of flies by. The villain in this movie is Skull King, and he doesn't really he doesn't really pose a threat at first until you realize he's controlling Shuma Goa, which I think it's the name of the the frozen the frozen dinosaur. You find out he's controlling him. You don't really know how he he got hold of the shard that controls him or anything like that. We go over a brief exposition. We go over a brief exposition of what what his backstory is and what the what the ancient tribe used to think of him and what they would write about. The, the movie has a slow burn at first. You we mostly tag along with the human characters and every now and then we cut back to Kong and maybe Godzilla if we're lucky. I still like the movie. I just wished it had more monsters than what I was hearing because I was hearing people say there was a lot of monster moments and which went and when it did I wish I wish there would have been more monster moments but the fight but the fight at the end was cool especially when when they did the anti-gravity thing and the cave and all the monsters were just like floating away and it was cool seeing Godzilla just swim through the air because because considering he's he's more of a swimmer than a land walker he probably knew what he was doing, probably figured it out quick. One complaint that I keep hearing is that this movie has a scaling problem with putting into perspective how big the the kaijus are. And uh, while I, I don't really agree with that perspective because most of the time when we're looking at the when we're looking at the um, the kaijus, when we already know they're big, there's already been like five movies in the monsterverse we don't need to keep emphasizing how big they are because when they fight when they fight like on earth we can already get a scale of how big they are compared to the buildings so i don't really get that argument like we don't need so many shots of humans looking at the kaijus from way down below in awe because we've already seen that before with the original 2014 godzilla and the kong skull island movie especially with Godzilla King of Monsters I think this movie does its job with entertaining entertaining you if you go to see it in the theaters I would recommend seeing it in the theaters because you still get a good kick out of the exper experience of watching the two kaijus fighting Skull King I think this movie had a good time coming out after the Oscar win of Godzilla minus <coughs> one but I, th I don't think people should be comparing it to that movie because when you look at Godzilla minus one, that's more of a human story in that case, where in this case it's more of a kaiju story. Story because in Godzilla minus one, we actually have real characters, real human arcs, social commentary of on how, social commentary on kaiju's and what they would do 
to the world how would they how would they affect us personally in this movie you it, just don't worry about that when you watch this movie just try to have fun you just you know you're just there to watch big dumb monsters fighting each other i did find it funny when kong grabbed the, the little monkey the little orange monkey and started swinging him around to to fight the other monkeys i thought that was really funny another thing i want to address is the title godzilla x kong obviously when you think when you put x in the middle of something you you obviously think of like you know obvious fanfics relationships in this movie godzilla writes kong i'm not clickbaiting i am i'm gonna have you take it out of context but let's just say godzilla writing kong was awesome to see on screen other than that i think i'm gonna give this movie three out of five stars i think they did a really good job with the action scenes i hope adam wingard comes back for the next movie whatever the next movie may be because I'm, he 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 has an eye for action Certain certain shots, shots, certain cinematography, holding them. Well, there you have it, folks. Those are my thoughts on Godzilla x Kong. Let me know what you think in the comments, and please share and subscribe. Now, legends unite to fight. Deep in the hollow earth, a battle is brewing. Fearsome Godzilla has evolved <laughs> to become more powerful than ever, and joins the mighty Kong with his powerful beast glove to face the deadliest titans ever, the giant ruthless Scar King, even Suko.